I call a meeting to order of the Colchester Planning Commission in 705. And we're going to start off tonight with a public hearing on Supplement 43 to the development regulations. You want me to take you a quick walk through? Yeah. All right. So I, I can just run through the hearing uh, notice, and then we can go through the regulations if you want. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, I will note that we have uh, one person joining us on Zoom, who's joining shortly, Kevin Sleeper, who's part of the GB team change. So we'll just let him join. But um, at any rate, so I'll go through uh, and um, I'll just go through Supplement 43 is a housekeeping amendment. It's just clearing up in existing language. It has a couple of rezonings in it, but the first thing is we're going to change Section 2.0710 to exempt small chicken coops from permits. The thought was with this that they tend to move around a bit, and so you can check for conformance with setbacks, and then they'll move um, so exempting some small ones. Um, the next thing is in section 2.09a, standards for accessory buildings exceeds 50% of principal structure size. We're clarifying um, that in the process involved in it. Um, we did not mean to, when we went from being a conditional use process to being a purely administrative process, um, with particularly ag districts and what have you, is clarify that barns and such do not need to meet this requirement. Um, section 2.09b1e, exclude unenclosed structures from maximum allowable square footage for accessory apartments. We've had particularly um, over the past couple of years um, shared uh, patio or deck space with in-law apartments that um, they wish to have access between the accessory and the primary. And unfortunately, the way that's worded right now is that counts against the maximum accessory apartment size. So this will allow um, for those sorts of amenities to be included with accessory apartments and not count against their square footage. Um, the next one is amend section 6.03 F1 from one foot to two foot. This is above baseboard flood elevation. FEMA has changed some of its regulations and as part of our maintaining our CS program is they really want to make sure that the mechanicals are above that base flood elevation. And so this really um, tries to move towards that is to make sure that we don't have any mechanicals hanging down, that everything is above that base flood elevation because when mechanicals get inundated, that can also be a very costly thing for homeowners. Um, next on the list, uh, clarify section 8.03b um, to reference back to 24 VSA section 4413. We're doing this just with some things to clarify with civic cultural and agricultural exemptions as to what those are. Um, and those have been recently clarified in state statutes. So we're um, just referring back to that if you ever need to have that clarification of what's exempt. Uh, another clarification is section 9.07 D4, which is exemption is for all GD districts and not just DD3. When we changed our PUD standards around open space set-asides, we had before about all GD districts, um, and this had changed it to be just DD3. So um, an instance is CHT is proposing a PUD at a court using existing buildings. Um, under our current regulations, they have to be 25% open space set aside. And we're making uh, very clear that that is not intended to be the case, particularly with existing development. Um, next clarification is to section 10.01C, which is add C7 through 9 regarding electric vehicle charging stations. This is a new state requirement that you have to at least provide for the electrical um, lines for future charging stations and developments over certain size. And so by putting us our regulation, we're um, doing what uh, regional planning has asked of member communities to put out to make people aware that this is a new state requirement. Um, and then we also, in section 10.01K, clarified bike rack locations. Um, and again, saying that they should be approximated to doorways and also electrical power sources so that they can also too benefit from um, electrical um, charging stations in the future. Um, section 10.01M uh, that 
we looked at to add additional commercial vehicles, maybe permitted on residential properties in conjunction with the home business use. This was at a request for an existing business on a residentially zoned property so that they might have some more opportunities available to them for home occupation. Um, amend section 10.08B3 to be 10 feet maximum height for solar panels instead of 8 feet because with the current limitations now to get ground clearance, um, this was something that was identified back when we were looking at energy planning. Um, amend section 9.02 and 9.04 to require parcel IDs on plans for subdivisions. Um, add section 10.01M5 for commercial vehicles and home businesses, um, which is the next part of what I went over. Uh, section 11.05, um, clarify expirations for tank or wastewater permits are the same as for building permits, one year. Amend um, section 12.20, um, again, we're clarifying some definitions for congregate care housing, hospice care home, nursing care institution, mental health facility, residential care home, to reference 33 VSA section 7102. That's again, just in case there's a um, concerns about um, what those uses are, you can point right back to state statute and the definitions there. Um, amend section 12.02 to add a definition of group quarters, lowest horizontal member, which again goes back to that floodplain requirement with mechanicals, and amend the definition of dormitory to reflect group quarters. Um, this is again straining out some of the definitions to fall in line with the states. Amend table A1 to add group quarters, add 4.230 landscape contractors yard as conditional to GD districts and lumber contractors yards, 4.210 as a conditional use to GD2. This is taking a look at some of the existing uses out before that have requested. Um, and we have somebody potentially joining us on Zoom about that. So I'll just pause for a minute. Audio. I can come back to that. Um, we are looking to rezone parcel um, tax map 64, parcel 4, and also parcel 5 from industrial to a residential 1. These are existing homes in the Shore Acres neighborhood um, that are somehow zoned industrial that we are going to rezone to residential to be um, in keeping with what's around. Um, and that is the summary of everything that we're looking at for changes in the supplement. We did receive um, a notice uh, from Patrick O'Brien representing SD Ireland uh, requesting changes to um, GD3 regarding the setback for um, garages on C streets and a modification to that, and I explained that that's not on the hearing of uh, what's in the actual regulations that were warned, and that would be on for a future summit. And I believe uh, Mr. Sleeper um, has joined us via Zoom, and um, I'll just quickly go over that. Also included in tonight's uh, hearing is a change of use of the table of uses to allow as uh, archival facilities and warehousing as conditional use in GD2, which is a report that would allow for the potential expansion of this business. And so that is what we have for you tonight. So we're looking for any comments from the public. So um, Mr. Sleeper is joined us by Zoom. We have no members, we have one member of the public, um, but I- He's all set. I don't know, Mr. Sleeper, do you have any comments? Cool. All right. Uh, Mr. Sleeper, if you would like to comment, you can unmute yourself. Okay. 
So we'll close the uh, public hearing on Supplement 43. Okay, I'll make a motion. I'll Please. second it. Um, Mr. Sleeper, did you have any comments? No, I said I just I wanted to listen in and see what okay. the process was at this point in time. Uh, and I hope to you and hear any yeah. comments. Yes. I just want to make sure we're jiggling some different platforms tonight, so just want to make sure that you had a chance if you wanted to talk. Thank you very much. So there's a motion and a yep. second to close the hearing. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now we move on to action for second number 43. Okay, so there's just some basically if the board has any ideas or changes, anything they need. So we're all happy with it. I don't see any changes. Good. Can we that third? Okay. Okay. So we need a motion. I'll make the motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the um, supplement has passed the planning commission and we'll next go to the select board sometime in July. We'll work on getting a public hearing notice out on that. Very good. I think we're possibly looking at the end of July. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Simple enough. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Um, you don't need to do anything further, but I would say that if you want to look to a, a, a select board meeting to tune into, maybe that July twenty sixth meeting would be a good one to look to tune into. It might be on that agenda. All right. Thank you. you too. All right. Very good. So now I need a motion to recess. I'll make a motion to recess. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now we will convene as the CRS Public Information Committee. Seven twenty. And this is going to hit a rewind and our uh, redo as. Um, the last meeting, you have to have two meetings on the program for public information under our CRS endorsement. So nothing has changed since then. It's our annual um, program of how we're going to communicate information about um, possible flooding, um, how to get flood insurance, um, how to prepare for events. Um, and so a lot of this we had already undertaken in the spring. Um, we tried to run this in March prior to any sort of seasonal lake flooding. Um, but we weren't able to get it on an agenda with your sort of a regular agenda until uh, May and June. So if you approve of it tonight, it will go to the select board for adoption. And it's one of those things that each year when CRS FEMA updates us, we um, just show them that we're keeping this up. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 There you go. Okay. So now we need a motion to recess. We'll make a motion. <laughs> I'll second. All right. All in favor? All right. All right. Here you go. All right. So the next thing that we have is East Lakeshore Drive work to date. And so that was a very thorough job. Well, thanks. Very <laughs> good job. That was amazing. Everything right there. Whoever steps in again, there's no question of where we were and where we're at. What we've done. Very, very good job. Now, saying all that, I don't think we need to go through the whole deal have you read from end to end here. No. So no. I, I, I wanted to sort of just walk you through a little bit of the history of it and sort of where you're at before COVID. So I think I tried to lay this all on staff notes. And so this is going in a book in planning and zoning with everything that's 
gone on to date and with the staff notes, but um, you had just completed the Ballot Bay Initiative Wastewater Program in January, handed it out to the select board. And you guys had taken a look at everything from recreation to bike ped to wastewater and heard a lot of different things sort of along the way. And a lot of those weren't necessarily in your wheelhouse, but I think you served as a great complex person for the board receiving a lot of information. And so a lot of that got handed off to the select board, which is the correct entity for this, and you're focusing on just the zone. And I think some of what you had heard, and it was in the town plan, was just to take a look at um, some of the things that had been an issue over on West Lake Shore Drive, heights of buildings, massing, use of the lake. Um, it's all, very, all zoned R2, so you weren't taking a look at really doing anything novel with the uses. It was really just the setbacks. And so one of the things that I had regional planning prepare, and this is something that you can take up later, um, is taking a look at what those setbacks look like as applied to some of the um, structures. So a 15 foot and a 20 foot. And so we began to sort of look into these sort of dimensional standards. So table of uses is pretty simple. Keep everything residential the way it is now. Um, dimensional standards, uh, taking a look at maybe a lesser courtyard setback along the lake side and a greater one of 20 feet along the non-lake side that allow for bike head improvements in the future. And also taking a look at, you can do just simply along the non-lake side, there's a little bit more room for it. Um, so we, so I had collected all this information over the intervening year. I had started to draft um, text that could create an LS1 and, or LS3 and 4 districts uh, for this area. So um, I've had that drafted. It's there for you guys to start to roll through at some point. Uh, it incorporates a lot of what was in the LS1 and LS2 for design standards. Um, and we even have a draft map that we can go with. Um, but that's going to be for the next plan um, to hopefully go with. But I think that when you guys are ready and when there's a staff person, um, I, I hope that there's consistency in this board to help shepherd that new person through. We have great staff, Zach and Renee are on board. They know what's going on. Um, so you're not starting from scratch. And so I'm happy to answer any questions or thoughts people had on that draft, but I'm hopefully going to leave it on the shelf in good hands with these two and also with you. Okay. Any ears? Questions on that? Not too thorough. that we can do tonight. So yeah. We need to delve into it. All right. No, it's a... Uh, Anna, did you have any questions or? You did a stellar job, as always. Thanks. And thank you for leaving in these capable hands. And I think the key thing is going to be that when the time comes, it's not to visit all of your previous work that you had done in the MBI, it's just to focus on the zoning. And the other thing that uh, I'll just bring up now is I think there were concerns about, uh, and we had taken a look at and we began to discuss this. What's there is there, and there's a certain grandfathering, and uh, you can't force people to comply by a certain date. So you're going to have to work with what's existing, and recognize that. And there are some tools that, if you ever want to go this route, in terms of um, regulating how many building permits could be issued in a year, if you're concerned about how rapid additional growth could be. But the, all the build outs that we've done is only up to, under the current zoning, 50 units in this entire area for build out, which is not a whole lot. So that's a conversation for later, and there are some tools there if you need them. But um, this is just a straight zoning proposal and doesn't contemplate any sort of growth restrictions or things like that. It just is really setting into place um, dimensional standards, design standards, and really trying preserve the character of the area, which I think was overwhelmingly what people were most concerned about. All right. I guess we're good. Okay. Move on. So, 
now we need the minutes of the 19th to be in motion. Uh, for the minutes, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. All right, now. All right. Uh, we'll go through. All in favor? Aye. 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 I can information. What? Well, let's have two sets for us to uh, sign. Yes. I do, actually. It's, sorry, the first time that I've had to. Uh, yeah, I, I think, no, you guys had actually signed the previous set. Okay, thank you. Yes, they're out in the box. Yeah. So those are this is the first time that we've actually had to sign this in a while. In person. I think so. Yeah, that would be exciting. <laughs> All right, back information. So I, there's a little bit of everything in there. I'm happy to go through any of it, but um, there is a uh, notice from Burlington about their combined development ordinance, a notice uh, for a Tower 43 Main Street, our May monthly report from planning and zoning. South Bureau had a notice, regulation changes. Nothing affecting us. Tower Any questions on PAC information? I'll, I'll just sort of chime in and say in terms of future agendas, they're going into hibernation again for a little bit. They have advertised my position. This is my last meeting with you all. Um, and I really, really appreciate working with you guys. Say that it's the people that I'm going to miss the most in Colchester. I've had excellent boards to work with, and um, I've very much valued that, and that's what's kept me going here, and just, I'm going to miss you guys in Philly. But it's uh, been a good run, and I think I'm leading in capable hands, and it's been so nice having Zach back as an intern, and now um, he's just taken the reins of development planner and just run with it, and Renee's pitch-hitting and uh, planning and zoning for the time being. They have advertised my position. I believe that they are trying to try and get somebody on board as yes. soon as possible. So, so when is technically your last day? Uh, Thursday. Ah, okay. Yes, I start in Fairfax on Monday. So, no rest. I can't thank you enough. Great job for the town. It's been a great informational. Wonderful experience having you with your knowledge, helping us, guide us through our town. I think you've made a lot of great decisions over the course of your time here, and it's much appreciated. The town is going to be losing a big asset. <laughs> well, thanks. But it's um, it's sort of right back at you because what's made my run here so good has really been the boards that I've worked with and that you all collaborate, you're all involved in your community, um, and you all work together. That is so valuable, you don't get that dynamic in every community, and that's part of what truly makes Colchester special. So just um, right back at you guys, keep on keeping on. All right, having said all that. I like our motion to adjourn before we cry. Need a second. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye.